Hi students, uh, now let's see the inference rules for, for the quantifiers. Uh, in the previous video, I explained about the inferences in the first order logic. The basic terminologies that we use is a substitution and equality. So that those two, by using those two uh, basic terminologies, I'm going to explain you uh, the inferences rules for the quantifiers in the first order logic. So as uh, propositional logic, we all so have the inference rules in first order logic. So not only for the uh, propositional logic, in the first order logic also some inference rules are there. So in the previous video, I explained about the uh, inferences for the propositional logic also. If you want, you just go through that video. And here also in the same way, uh, the first order logic is also having some inference rules. So what are those? Those are universal generalization, universal instantiation, existential instantiation and existential introduction. Actually, universal and existential are the two quantifiers that we know that, right? These two are the quantifiers, universal and existential are the quantifiers. So the inference rules for this is universal generalization, universal instantiation. In the same way, existential instantiation and existential introduction. Let's see one by one. What is this universal generalization? Universal generalization, it is a valid inference rule which statement that if permits, premises P of C is true. Let me tell you the uh, definition first. Later, I'll explain with an example. Don't be confused. Okay. If you didn't understand the definition, don't bother about it. If you see the example, then you can clearly understand what is this universal generalization. So, the universal generalization is a valid inference rule. Why I'm saying this is a valid inference rule? Because with statements that if premises P of C is true for any arbitrary element C in the, in the universe of discourse. Then we can have a conclusion as for all x, p of x. So, this uh, the universal generalization can be represented as p of c. This is a premises p of c is true for any arbitrary of uh, element c. So, here this is an element, okay, which is the premises of c is true. But the universe of discourse that we can have a conclusion like for all x, p of x. So, P of C by for all X, P of X. I'll explain with an example. Don't confuse. But you have to remember that the universal generalization can be represented like this. P of C by for all X, P of X. So, let's represent P of C. Let me take a statement. A P of C is, I'm taking a statement like a byte contains 8 bits. A byte contains 8 bits. So, this is a predicate. Okay. A statement with an arbitrary element C. A byte contains 8 bits. So, for all x, p of x is nothing but all bytes contain 8 bits. It will also be true. Is it? Suppose if a particular byte contains 8 bit means then all bytes contains 8 bits. So, this is universal generalization. So, when it is true means obviously this is also true. So, this statement I had represented in this universal generalization. A byte contains 8 bits. That means for all bytes, all bytes contains 8 bits. All bytes contains 8 bits. Is it clear? Now, let's see the universal instantiation. It is also called universal elimination. The instantiation you also call it as elimination. So, it is also called universal elimination. It can be applied multiple times to add a new sentence. Let's see here. The universal uh, instantiation uh, rule states that we can infer any sentence that is a P of C, that is a premises P of C, by substituting the ground term C, that is a constant within a domain X, that is for all X P of X, for any object in the universe of discourse, this can be represented as for all x p of x by p c. Whereas universal generalization, I represent it as p of c by for all x p of x. So that is the universal generalization. And this is the universal instantiation for all x p of x by p of c. So see here in this example, every person like ice cream. So this is, I'm 
uh, actually for all this symbol is for for all every and and everything right so here every person like ice creams implies this is a representation for all x p of x so we can infer that john likes ice cream means a particular person where in this generalization what i said a, uh, there i explained that it is a bit okay so see here a byte contains 8 bits so this is a p of c a byte contains 8 bits that means all bytes contains 8 bits so in the same way here every person every person likes ice cream so we can infer that a particular person that is a john likes ice cream a john likes ice cream a particular person john likes ice cream so here c is a particular person and here x is a every person x is the every person this is a universal instantiation now let's see the another existential instantiation existential instantiation so it is also called as elimination existential elimination i already ex said that instantiation you can call it also call it as elimination so existential instantiation is also called as existential elimination which is a valid inference rule in the first order logic it can be applied only once to replace the existential sentence. So, here you can only apply once. Whereas in this universal instantiation, you can apply multiple times to add a new sentence. But in existential, only once, uh, you have to apply only once to replace the existential sentence. So, this rule states that one can infer P of C from the rule given in the form of there exists X P of X for a new constant symbol C. So, just like a universal instantiation. So, in place of for all, you have to keep there exist. There exists x p of c. So, just like universal instantiation, the existential instantiation, the only difference is here we are using there exist. And it can be applied only once to replace the existential sentence. Now, coming to the fourth type that is existential introduction. It is also called as existential generalization. So, just like a universal generalization, the existential generalization is, is the same. But only difference here is we are using there exists. Instead of for all x, there, you are using there exists. So, that is the main only difference. This rule states that if there is some element C, a particular element C in the universe of discourse, which has a property P, then we can infer that there exists something in the universe which has a property P. So, see the example, then you will clearly understood. Pinky got good marks in max. Means a particular person. C is a pinky. A pinky got good marks in the max. That means, therefore, someone got good marks. There exist. There exist means someone. There exist means someone. Someone got good marks. Pinky got good marks in max and there exists someone who got good marks in the max. So, this is the existential uh, generalization and the universal generalization. The formula is the same but only the difference here we are using the someone and there we use the for all. Okay. And those two are the same. Thank you.